So a long time ago, I made three videos showing off custom camos, as well as made a tutorial on how to make your own camos. And since then, a couple people, mainly Talkster, and most recently, Balsk, have asked me, hey, how do we do the advanced stuff with that? Because you can't change the undercoating paint. And I said I'd make a tutorial on how to do it. That was 10 months ago. So I'm here to do it now. Now, in this video, I'm going to be assuming you already watched this one, because if you haven't seen that one, this is going to be a lot more complicated. The only thing new this time you're going to need is this XML editor that you can find on GitHub in the description. The first thing you want to do is get whatever tank that you want. It really doesn't matter. Something big and flat is nice. And you're going to want to pick out your camo that you want to change. This is for two reasons. One is because you already have to do this anyway to change the camo. Two is because you have to change it in a different way later. We're going to use Roll Into Christmas just because does anyone really like this? So you're going to want to take your camo that you already have made, assuming you've already seen the first original video. And if you haven't, take a minute to, you know, do that now and rename it to Roll Into Christmas. When you go back in game, presuming it wasn't already equipped, you can put it on now. And you can see all these little red pieces of paint sticking out the sides that don't match the colors at all. Now, if you made a red camo, then this is fine. You don't have to change it at all if you like the color of red that it is. But if you made really any other color of camo, that's going to propose an issue for you to fix. So there's two ways to do this. Option one is take the camo you have right now and find a camo that already has the matching paint or similar that you want for said camo. For this camo, we're looking for something either potentially white, if we really want to do that, black, cobalt. Some camos like this one don't have any undercoating paint, so you have to keep looking. And we're really looking for something like Streamline, where it's kind of purpley, kind of black, and it matches really good with the color that we want. So we're going to go back into the catalog of all the camos and find streamline rename our current camo that we want over to the same name as what streamline is and when we go back into the game after renaming said camo to be the exact same thing which is twitch march 2022 go back into the game and now that will be replaced and this looks a lot better. The color's a lot closer. The blue is much, much, much better than the red, obviously. And it sticks out much less. Yeah, it just, it looks right. Right. This, this looks nice and proper, and as you'd want it to be. The second solution to changing these color schemes is a little bit more involving than that. And this is going to require a lot of commitment if you actually want to do this, so... Fair warning now. The first thing you want to do is equip the camo you want to change to a tank, any tank you want, and then play a battle. Just because this will save you a ton of time later. It doesn't really matter how the battle goes, it's just this saves you so much time as you'll see later. The second thing you want to do is open up 7-Zip, which you should already have, again, if you saw the original video. And you're going to want to go to the World of Tanks file path into res and into packages. And you're going to want to have to scroll down until you find a package file named scripts. This contains all the script files in the entire game, including the one that we're looking for. You go into scripts again, you go into item underscore defs. You're going to go into customization. And then you're going to go into paint and in paint, there's going to be an XML file called list. Now, this is the file that controls all of the colors of paints for everything else. And you're going to take that XML file and put it somewhere where you know how to find it. Now, if you've done this before, I recommend putting that file in its own path so that you know where it is, because when it's in its own path, you can know which files your main file in which ones any new file you have to drag over when a new patch drops and you have to add stuff that wasn't there before. So if you're doing this for the first time, put it somewhere else. So it's now your main file if you want to continue doing this. I, of course, already have a main file, so there's no need for me to do this. So I'll just leave the folder. So we have list. 
you can add whatever you know stuff onto it you want to signify that it is the main one or not the main one but it's just called list for right now what you want to do now is open up said xml editor that you downloaded from before from github and you're going to want to click on open you want to navigate to where your xml files are they will not load originally you have to select either all files or xml files in the bottom right because it just doesn't show up otherwise and you want to open it now this is going to bring up a lot of numbers a lot of names a lot of ugly stuff that's going to look overwhelming at first but it's fine because in reality it's very simple since we're changing the roll into Christmas camo, you want to search for roll into Christmas. And there's the ID right there. This is the list of every single camo in the entire game. And these numbers here are the ones that control the paint colors. It might look all really overwhelming to some people, but don't be alarmed. Those numbers are the hexadecimal color codes for just colors. There's four numbers. The last one I presume to be like strength of color. I haven't really messed with it. But the other three colors are red, green, and blue. If you put this into any color picker, like if you just Google color picker and you type the numbers in, it will come up with the exact same color that you're going to show up with if you type it in in game. Now, it's going to be a little different because it gets dried and all that stuff, but that's going to happen. It's also the same colors you can see here that showed up on the outskirts of when we put kill switches camo on the concept one B. So this is how it works. It's actually very simple when you think about it. And all you have to do to change those is just change those numbers to whatever you want. So we're going to aim for like a shade of blue here. We could go deep blue. We could go a lighter blue anywhere in between. We could go black or carbon if we wanted, but we're going to go a, like a Royal purple. So, since we have our royal purple picked out, those numbers are what we're going to put in for the color. Uh, we're just going to have 255 at the end because I honestly don't really know what happens if you change it, but we'll just keep it as is. Now, for glossiness and metallicity, I believe that's a word, I like putting in either 0.9 or 0.8. These are percentage values with 1 being 100%. Now, they actually don't care if you go above that 100%, so you could just put in 1,000% by putting in 10, although it's really excessive and does some funky stuff, which we'll cover at the end of the video. So for now, we'll leave it at 0.8. You want to go and you want to save. You want to, once again, select XML and override what you had before. If you want to save a backup, a okay with me. And now you have your XML file. Now you want to navigate to where said XML file is, as well as on another file explorer window, go to the current patch in your res mods folder. You want to go to scripts. You want to make a new folder called item underscore defs. You want to make a folder in there called customization. You can ignore the vehicles tab one. This is a change firing noises, which we might cover someday. Go to paint, make another folder. I know it's a lot of folders, but just bear with me because this is the last one. And in there you put the list file. Now this has to be updated every patch, which we'll cover later. But for now, you just throw that in there. I'm going to save a backup just because this has like 40 camos changed on it already. So I don't want to, you know, accidentally overwrite it and lose a lot of that. And we're going to drag the new one into the main thing and make sure to copy it. So you don't have your only copy be what's in the game right now. Then you're going to want to go and you're going to want to open that replay that you played before. This is why I said save a replay on screen on the main screen there is the opening the replay file and in the bottom right is opening the game client from scratch to view it in your garage 
We're going to play these side by side just to show how quickly you get into a replay file compared to when you get into the game. It's like a quarter of the time. It saves an immense amount of time, and this is how a lot of people making skin or model mods do their stuff because it saves a lot of time. Now that you're in your replay, you can do whatever you want. Just make sure to check out your camo. Now, free cam mod does work a lot with this. It works very well. It's very helpful for seeing colors up close and stuff to see how distracting or accurate they actually are. You can play a replay, pause your replay. Be sure to look around, check every like corner of the tank to make sure it looks nice. And if the color is not exactly what you want, all you gotta do is close out the replay, go back, change a number, and just restart the replay again. This is the value of saving a replay. If you watched my speed run of making a camo, like, I don't even want to know how much time was spent opening the game, closing the game, opening the game, closing the game. With this, you can just go in, change a couple numbers. For example, let's say I think it's a little too purple, so we're going to take out some red. The numbers go RGB because red, green, blue. So we just lowered our red from 115 to 80. We can override our list file again. Go back into our documents folder where we have it saved. Refresh and drag it over. Overmatch what we had before. And then restart your replay again. The overwhelming amount of time this process takes is pretty much just restarting the game client, seeing if it's accurate or not, restarting a replay, seeing if it's accurate or not. And it's really just fine tuning what color you want to get. You can see here, it's a little too bright for what the rest of the camo is. And while it might look good on the gun barrel, not so good on other places. We go back into a replay with a second color change, a little bit of a deeper blue, and I think it looks better. Now, it might not be perfect. We can go, we can restart it again. And this is pretty much what this process is. You just have to make sure it looks good on the turret, on the engine deck, all around the back of the turret, on the sides, on the wheels, and just, you know, make sure it all looks right. It's a lot of fine tuning, and I cannot emphasize the importance of doing a battle first, or at least finding a replay that has either an ally or an enemy wearing a camo you want to change because it will save you so much time having to open replays instead of opening the game client over and over again. It'll save you like 75% of the time of that. Now, I said something before about if you wanted to change these numbers to be over one. And when I said it does something funky, it does something really funky to blue and green, which would be this. Your tanks can actually glow and not without having, or you don't have to do anything really model related to make that happen. They just have to hit direct light. This only happens with green and blue. I've done this with red, I've done this with gold, I've done this with orange. It does not work with any other colors besides a mixture of green to blue. You might have seen some posts in different places where there's a char future and the light glows if it has certain blue or green camos on it. That's the same thing as this. This, of course, is modded, so it's a little different. And if this is what you want, pretty cool. It looks very unique, but also it can look very ridiculous and be very distracting to play with. So I will say use caution with this because it can look very excessive. On other colors, though, if you set the glossiness lower than the metallicity, you can get stuff like what I did with Damien's camo, which is having very reflective undercoating paint transparent through your DDS file. So it works out really cool because all the reflective orange parts are right there. And all the flat parts, which are part of the camo, are black and aren't reflective. So you can do this in however many different ways. For a couple of camos, I actually had no DDS file whatsoever and decided to just have it be the undercoating paint. This is how you can make solid colors of shininess, such as gold. You can do a nice shade of red if you wanted to, a nice ruby. I've done a tinfoil camo as well, just for the heck of it. There's a lot of camos I like replacing doing this. But 
there is some bad news with this. I keep mentioning that you have to update these files every single time you want to do this. That's because if you don't, the game just won't load if you have these files installed. That's not really an exaggeration either. Uh, I've had this happen on stream before, mid-patch when they keep doing stuff like a Dune Battle Pass. has two new camos in it. If someone buys the pass, decides to use the style, my game just won't load into that battle. That can be a challenge. So every patch you have to basically by hand scroll through the new list document with your old list document and anything that is not present in the old one that is now present in the new one has to be dragged from there over to the old one. It is a pretty lengthy process. This alone is the reason that I split the mod pack with the camo pack because the camo pack will crash your game. The mod pack with no camos in it will not crash your game. That's why I split the two apart. But if you're willing to go through and replace all the IDs, you're willing to do all of that, then you have everything you need to do now in order to change undercoating paints and make really as cool a camos and 2D styles as you want. This really isn't a remodeling tutorial or a 3D style tutorial or anything like that. It's just because 2D styles also have a huge creative wiggle room space and I don't even know how many other people know how to do this. This is something that I kind of just had to figure out and I was loosely told what was right and what was wrong by a couple of modern people, most notably Pansy, who was like, yeah, that's how that works. So that's what I did a year ago and then forgot to make the video until now. So I'm so sorry, Talkster. Talkster has been waiting for this video for a year. I am not exaggerating. It has been pretty much a year. And I also wanted to upload something because I haven't uploaded in a couple weeks and I feel guilty whenever I do that, even though it does take a long time to make these videos.